Get everybody, welcome to another episode of This Week in Crypto. And I'm going to start off not with a news item, but I'm going to start off first and foremost by looking at the markets. Because I can tell you right now, it's been a cracking week for us traders. And what actually happened? Well, we made some money. We'll start over here with some of these tether pairings that I got into one last week. Back in here, really good move this week. STP also the same. Back in here, really good move this week. Let's have a look at a couple more like uh, Lend BTC. I'll show this to you as this was a cracking move um, from back over here. Another massive move up taken out over here for those that traded that. I got a short on Doge. I think that might have been last week as well, actually. There's been so much action out there, guys. It really, really has been a really fantastic week for crypto traders around the world. And if you look at the top 10 as well, just briefly, you'll see a couple of things that I find quite interesting here. And the first of that is for a good two or three weeks, Bitcoin really struggled to break more than a move of one single percent. Very difficult for it to do it. Didn't do it for a long period through here. That liquid or the volatility was just so lackluster that we couldn't break 1%. Then this week we broke it twice. Here we have a 1% move, a 1% move on the close, of course, and then another one at 0.8 closing uh, yesterday. Of course, today we're down 1%, which is fairly common at the moment as we see this chart. Look at this right here. A nice little pullback into that zone that I call the cradle zone. So not just Bitcoin, but Ethereum finally gave us the breakout that I've been waiting for and loading up for, to be fair. It pushed up through that 250 level that I've been speaking of for quite a long time, as have other people as well. And now Ethereum looks really set. But how far can Ethereum run? Well, Plenty far. There's plenty of room up to 300 and beyond from this point here. We've only just got started, really. I started buying more Ethereum back on this candle, and it's run very, very well since then. XRP, well, it moved as well. Let me get these Fibonacci levels out of there. XRP also having a good week. As a matter of fact, nearly all of the crypto top 10 pairs, apart from Cardano, interestingly enough, being very sideways, most of them had a nice shot in the arm moving higher. All right. So the market did see some positivity, some growth. The market capitalization did increase as well. And we finally saw some of these big dogs start to move. That's the market response to whatever news has been going on. Interesting what's been going on out there. Well, here's something that caught my attention for the wrong reasons. I was on YouTube just today, actually, and I, you might have seen the tweet uh, and the Facebook post that I put out saying about YouTube doing a, you know, they had a promoted thing on the top right where you could see like the, you know, the next video. It was a live feed. It was with Elon Musk talking about, I don't know, something tech wise, of course, and I had one of those Bitcoin, you know, give me five Bitcoin, you'll get 12 and a half back, all this sort of crap. It was there. Now, how can YouTube, how can YouTube post this stuff? It, it's beyond me. And this is why it's beyond me. I have had some very difficult times trying to get advertising up on different social platforms and whatnot. I'm a legit guy, a legit business, and I'm a trader. It's, we, you know, we don't ask for anything. We just put content out. That's it. And we couldn't get what we needed to get done done. Now, I don't, for the life of me, I don't understand how they're able to have these scams. There was 43,000 people watching. And when I put that post up, I got inundated with comments of people telling me that this has been happening for the last few weeks. So crypto really is coming back for the wrong reasons. We're starting to see a bit more interest in the market. And now it's going across on all these little scams are popping up left, right and center. So it was really pleasing for me to see Steve, see Steve Wozniak are coming in here and suing YouTube. I think it's fantastic because it's not, they should not be allowed to, uh, to, to let this occur. It's absolutely ludicrous that a big company like YouTube is out there peddling this stuff, that they allow it to happen. We saw what happened on Twitter just last week. Let's not forget that was only last week where we saw the uh, the blue tick accounts, the um, legitimate, what are, they, what are they called? Um, I don't remember, blue tick accounts. They were, you know, hacked and they basically put that message of Bitcoin out there. And we'll come back to that in just a moment. But it's really silly. I just don't understand how on earth they can possibly get away with it. Uh, and you can see there's a lot of um, cases here of suing uh, Ripple Labs. 
Uh, you know, earlier this year, Ripper Labs, along with the CEO Brad, sued the platform for allegedly failing to effectively police fake XRP giveaway scams. I think it's a very, very good thing to do here because we have been seeing a, a steady stream that have been absolutely rubbish, and it's very, very good um, to see that there are people with power that are in there doing the right thing, making them accountable. It's not got anything to do with the money. I mean, it's Steve Wozniak. He wants to make sure that the right thing is done here and doesn't hurt people, which is fantastic to see. Now, of course, what we see a lot of, it's, uh, it's this. You know, it's, we'll receive twice as much back. That's what I'm saying. Convince you to transfer their cryptocurrency, promising that for a limited time, they will receive twice as much back. Now, this is really bad for the space. <sighs> Frustrates me. It's bad for the space. Because, again, people that don't know what Bitcoin is, people that don't know what cryptocurrency is, they, all they see is this scamming stuff. They see this dodgy thing pop up on YouTube that they don't know. All they look at is go, well, it's always a scam around that. Twitter, for example. YouTube now. It's really, really frustrating. And I really hope to see it vanish very, very soon. Speaking of Twitter... Uh, let me go back to, where did I find that? Here we go. They said that they had taken about $120,000. $120,000. I can't find the article. It doesn't really matter. That was the main thing in it. $120,000 for that hack on Twitter. Now, do you think that was a good idea? Absolutely not. They will now have the biggest indus- uh, biggest um, bodies after them. They've done a bad thing. Big business, big money, big governments will all be hunting down this attacker for 120 grand? Is it worth it? Absolutely not. How crazy is that? You go to jail for that sort of thing. The other big bit of news this week has been, well, largely positive for the space in the sense that um, you can have your banks hold your crypto. Now, I don't know how I feel about that. As a matter of fact, I probably do know how I feel about that. You know, if the banks are holding your crypto, I don't know, man. Like, it's for me. Ah, <sighs> no. No, I don't think that's something that I want. But it could certainly help Bitcoin gain more momentum. It's more legitimacy. Once again, I mean, you know, if people are going to associate Bitcoin and cryptocurrency with scams, well, at least they're, t- you know, coming in with a bank as well, which are, you know, it's a bank, right? Um, so not that I hate banks, uh, I just know that some of the practices have been very shady and continue to be very shady to this day. So really good news there. Uh, from safe deposit box to virtual vaults, we must ensure banks can meet financial services needs of their customers today. This opinion clarifies that banks can continue satisfying their customers' needs for safeguarding their most valuable assets, which today for tens of millions of Americans includes cryptocurrency. Now that is um, quite a, a statement. They're saying they want to keep it safe. Much the same as you could have a safety deposit box where you could put your treasury notes in or your birth certificate or an expensive watch or a slab of gold, or, or, you know, a gold bullion bar. They're now saying, well, we could house that for you. So that means that they'll be putting a price to it because when you go and do these things, you need to put down the value of that and it needs to be verified and it needs to be accepted that it's going to go in there because, of course, they'll have insurance on that and it's a safety deposit box. They want to make sure it stays safe and that what is in there has been verified. So that's going to be interesting to see how much we see go into this system and how fast it catches on. I suspect that as the world goes closer and closer towards a digital currency uh, in many different parts of the world, of course, in the US also talking about this, I tend to think we might see a little bit more activity in the cryptocurrency space in the second half of the year than we did in the first half of the year so very interesting there another the positive in the sense of um, banks getting involved they were saying scams now they're jumping back into the market so guys that is this week in crypto there wasn't a huge amount of news that i saw as being majorly significant aside from the youtube issue and also the us regulator saying yeah you can do that So to find out more about what we do, ladies and gentlemen, tradercob.com is what you need to do. If you haven't got your FTX account, open up one with 10% discount and Binance as well. Just go to the description below. (laughs) Have a great weekend, guys. And until next week, I'm Craig Cobb from tradercob.com. The Trader Cobb Crypto Show, talking business in blockchain. 